Hello, ladies. Sorry I'm so late. Rainbow Stamper's fine. I thought he might possibly have an ear infection, but he's all good. And I was just filming a video for that bridge fold card with the dinosaur suite that took about forever and a year to upload. So that's what took me so long because I had planned on coming on earlier. So I thought what I would do today... And I'm going to do something different on Thursday. On Thursday, we're going to do coloring. So I stamped out a whole bunch of stuff. You can see I did all these yesterday. I stamped out a whole bunch of stuff. And what we'll do is we're going to color them in with a combination of the watercolor pencils and the blender. Stampin' Blends, not the blender pens. Maybe blender pens and Stampin' Blends. So we'll do that on Thursday. So Thursday will be live at 930. Hello from Minnesota. So... What I thought we could do is I made all these the other week. If you guys remember me sitting outside, I was sitting at the pool. I wasn't trying to brag. I was just sitting there and I made these. And then I saw a really cute idea in the catalog. And I thought it would make a really nice card, even though it's not a card. So I'll show it to you in a minute. So I thought we could make a couple cards with this little guy. I'm going to actually color him. So I will stamp him again and color him. And then we're going to make this one card that I saw. It's like a... A gift box and we'll make it into a card so I thought that would be fun so at least do something fun today because I wanted to do something and then I was watching um I cannot remember what her name is but she was on earlier um Donna was watching her and she made the most adorable card just with some designer series paper and some foil really really beautiful very talented young lady and I, that's why I was waiting for my video to upload <laughs> So anyway, if for some reason you have to go or this is in the middle of your day, I know it's a very weird time. It'll be up for the replay later on, so no worries. Oh, Adrian, you're vacationing in Pennsylvania. Enjoy yourself. Thank you all for stopping in and for saying hello. I appreciate it. And he's all he's all good. That boy bounces back fast. That's the good thing about being little, right? You bounce back super fast. So I thought these couple cards, I had stamped these outside the other day, and I thought they would be really easy to mount. This is the Magnolia paper, just onto um, the Magnolia paper, and this one I don't have a sentiment with it, but we can like add something to it and maybe put it up top, do a sentiment with that. But what I wanted to show you was, um, oh my gosh, I just lost my train of thought. Okay, this card is what I wanted to show you. This I thought would be super cute, so we're going to make this as well. But instead of doing it like this little box, this would be really cute to make a card for like a welcome to the neighborhood card. So what we're going to do is we're going to stamp these little boxes, color them in. So we will color those. And we're going to um, cut one more. I did cut two of these already to save you some agony. So I cut two of these in thick whisper white because it makes it much nicer if it's thick. Gives it like a nice elevation. And then we'll cut the last one in red. And we'll make this exact thing here but we'll make it into a card instead and then I got out this one I thought this was really cute too like on this one all they did was watercolor the line they stamped him and they did that so that would be really easy to do so maybe we could do this one for our um, actual card that we stamp so we have something different because these I'm kind of just kind of put together we'll add a little something to them they were really easy to color one of them I made the UPS guy because Christian, of course, wasn't happy with just the UPS man. He said we needed a mailman, and he had to have red on his bag. So he gave me a little instruction and told me what color I had to make the dog. And we had to have a dog, too. That was the other thing. And um, the other thing I wanted to tell you. So, yes, Donna, Handcrafted Blessings. I don't know what her first name is. So thank you for mentioning that. She was mentioning about um, when you emboss with the foil especially because this is a dynamic folder when you emboss with the foil on any folder regular folder or not it does tend to really be a little rough on the foil paper so what I started doing was and I'm going to show you and I'm going to show you one the good way and one the bad way so I'm going to just do that first just to get that out of the way so thank you yes that was who she was 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you one time, one way, and one time the better way, because if not, it really is very hard on your paper. So if you have your big shot, what you want to do is you don't want the magnetic platform because it's still a little too big. You just want your plain old base platform. You don't want the thin die adapter. You want to take that out. You just want your um, one cutting pad. And I have my foil paper here. So hold on. I have everything, as always, in a very um, tumultuous pile that could fall over at any second. So I just have a little bit of little bit of um, foil paper. So I'm just going to use this little scrap and then I'll just cut another scrap. I'm going to do them in the same color so you can see the difference of what I mean. So let me just cut this one. This is like a two inch piece. So it's just two by four. And the nice part about this paper, in case you haven't seen it, it is so vivid. It's really beautiful color paper. It's that navy. Oh my gosh. It's so nice. So, so nice. But I digress. Okay, so normally, if you were going to make this, right, you would take, now this is a dynamic folder, so it's a little fatter. I picked this one because it has a really pretty detail. So normally, if you were going to do your dynamic folder, you would have your one pad, you would have your folder, you'd have your piece of paper, you would put your other cutting pad on top. I don't even know if this is going to go through now that I think about it. Let me see. No, that's a little too much. Hold on. Let me take this one out. So if you have your dynamic folder, your regular platform, and you're going to put this through. It is still a little tough to crank just because that dynamic folder is so big. So this one you can see, I don't know if you can see that, but this paper is torn. So if you saw this in person, it's basically the the white, it is really, really, really hard on your foil paper. So what I started doing instead, now granted with the dynamic, it can be a little bit different um, only because it is a little bit thicker from the get-go. But what I did, let me see if I can get this to line up correctly. So I'm trying to remember what I did. Because we, we made these in my card class the week before last. Actually, I guess it's been two weeks ago by now. So I took three pieces of printer paper. So this is just paper that I otherwise would recycle. And I folded these in half. So technically you have like six sheets of paper. Let me see. This is... it works. Hold on just one second. I want to see if this works the way I thought it did. Nope, that was too much. Hold on. Let me, let me try back to this one. I don't think this is the one I ended up doing it with. And you know what? It's probably because I picked this. Let me pick a regular folder. I apologize. I'm sorry. Give me one sec. you know like every single folder I'm picking up oh I'll use the one I used every folder I'm picking up of course is dynamic so what I did was got your regular platform and I have this that's the peacock so what I did was I put this in like that I put my three sheets of paper I can even turn this this way so it's not too hard on the bend and then I put in my one cutting pad, like that. Okay, let's see if it worked. Nope, of course not, hold on. <laughs> oh, yep, I'm live. That's what happens. Let me put my other pad in there. Nope, that's too much. It's way too much. It's a work in progress here, guys. I should have clearly should have made the card first. <laughs> 
yes, it does really, it's really, really hard on the paper. Okay, so here's what, here was the final thing. So I used the Big Shot Platform, the Thin Dye Adapter, the three sheets of paper folded in half, so it's like six half sheets of paper. I put the folder in with the paper and one cutting pad, and then you get it so it looks like this instead. So it gives you an impression, but unlike this one, it doesn't rip the paper. So this paper is very, very deeply embossed, and I just, I don't think you can see it because of the way. It's such a dark paper, but this is torn. This whole thing is torn. It really, really tears this foil paper easily. So my suggestion would be, now here's the thing though, that was with a, this is a regular folder. So the dynamic folders are a little bit hard to work. So let me just try this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this out. So I have my regular base and I'm going to take and just put one, might have to do two, but I'm going to put one, I'm going to snip. Just give me one second. I want to grab one more piece while we're doing this. If I'm making an example. And... Okay, so I have one more piece. I'm going to try this folder again. This is that uh, country floral. All right, so I have just one piece of paper and one cutting pad. And let me see if I can run this through and if this doesn't ruin it. So this feels still a little bit tight. Let's see. Okay, still, and what it actually does, this is crazy, is it actually pushes the embossed part down. It's so much pressure on it. So if you were to do this, you might have to do this just strictly with the platform, this, and one thing. Because it is so fat when you put that piece of paper in there. I'm just going to run this little piece through here at the end just to see if it does any different. With no... And I know they have that like new 3D embossing plate or adding thing. I don't even know what the heck that thing is. I haven't gotten it yet because I kind of didn't really want to have to buy something. So this, <laughs> as you can see, it embossed over the already the embossing. So what I did was this actually worked. So I just used the Big Shot platform. I used the thick embossing folder and just one plate. And it didn't rip it. And that was actually a second passing for the embossing because, you know, I already did this. So that actually worked out pretty good. There is a slight tear here, but that could be just because it was run through two different times. So just be careful. Try doing it first with just some sheets of scrap paper. Quite honestly, um, I've found that that is the best. So if you have, I can tell you this 100% for sure. If you have a regular folder, so a regular flat embossing folder, three sheets of cardstock, the platform, the thin adapter, and then your cutting plate will be your sandwich. But if you're doing it with the dynamic plate, I would just do the plate or the dynamic folder and one plate. So hopefully that'll work out a little bit better for you. So sorry about all that trial and multiple errors. But anyway, I just wanted to be able to share that because that paper is not cheap, first off. And secondly, there's like nothing worse than when you think you're making something and then all of a sudden you ruin it because that's what happened when I was setting it up for the card class is that I had it set up a certain way. And then when I was going through to make the template for everybody or to make the sample card and I was like, oh my gosh, what the heck is going on? This looks absolutely awful. Okay, so on to our card. Oh, look at you at the cabin for the summer. Aren't you a lucky girl? So that was just a little run through with the foil paper. So <clears throat> you might be able to see a little better down here. These are all kind of ripped. So just be wary so you don't waste your paper. Um, again, if you have, if, I don't know if you guys have been watching any of the stuff from the demos that are on the, uh, the incentive trip. What is this? Five and a quarter. I'm going to trim this down just a little bit. Four by five. I'm going to do this to three and three quarters by five but they're working on a new trimmer so hang in there if you're don't keep buying blades for this other trimmer because we didn't like it anyway so 
I didn't like it anyway. Replacing a trimmer eight million times, the blades are just ridiculous in my opinion. So luckily we're hopefully moving on to new things, but it isn't going to be ready in time for the catalog. So don't get yourself too, too excited. So another paper you could use if you wanted something for a background versus this, just like a regular line paper, you could use these really cool, come on, where are they? Must be in the back here. Stripes. These are in the sailing away paper. There's these like a little bit bigger of a stripe. I do like that there's a lot of very interchangeable stuff. Another one that's got a lot of really nice background stuff is the, um, I believe this is the Garden Lane. Yeah, not Magnolia Lane. This one has a lot of, actually a couple of them. I think I used all of them up. So a lot of different DSP you could use for backgrounds. So what we'll do is we're going to just pop these two together. And I'm going to, for one of these, I'm going to stay with Mossy Meadow. And where? Oh, I have it. Green. Lost my Mossy Meadow. Well, maybe we won't be using Mossy Meadow. Let me put it back in the wrong section or something. Mm -hmm. Okay, so no Mossy Meadow on that because I don't know where it is. How about a little crumb cake? That's what happens when you clean your office. Nothing is where you left it the first time when you cleaned it. It's gotta be around here somewhere. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this to four and a quarter. Yes, this is a tonic, a Tim Holtz um, guillotine cutter. Apparently we used to have one of these, I guess a long time ago. So there are some demos that actually have one that says Stampin' Up! on it, but I got one because I just was having so much of a hard time with scoring things or cutting things when I was having like classes. I'm just scoring this at five and a half. So there will be for one. I'll do that. We'll do the same thing for both of these just to make it simple. And I could have scored these ahead of time, but I forgot. I got so distracted by the fact that I cannot find my Mossy Meadow. So they used to... Stampin' Up! used to have one, but I really like it. Now, another trimmer that my friend Jamie has that I think is amazing, and I don't know if anybody has this or not, so I'm just going to put this together. This is going to be really simple. I'm just going to put this together, just simple, easy card, and then I'll show you. I even goofed this one up. Um, she has something called a cutter pillar. Has anybody ever heard of that? Does anybody have a cutter pillar? So apparently the cutter pillar has a light on one end of it. So you have to have something to plug it in with, obviously. And you can like get really, really tiny, tiny trims. So when we went to Jamie's house, she was the one that hosted our last, look at that, just simple, easy card there. She hosted our last stamp club. And we were all like, you would have thought we got a pass to go into, um, you know, craft world for the day. Because that's how cool her craft room is. It's like going into a craft store. I'm going to do this one just slightly askew. Just because I think that looks kind of neat sometimes. We'll do this this way. Still have to add a sentiment on this. So we're going to add something to this. Hmm... How about delivering lots of positive thoughts? That's super fun. This one has a lot of really good sentiments. So anyway, we went into Jamie's house and we were all like, the gates of heaven opened and the angels are singing. Her house was, <laughs> everything was so organized. Oh my gosh, it was really neat. So the next time I go there, I think I've said this before, I will do a video. Actually, if everybody doesn't mind, I'll do a live video. So it's going to be in the evening. So we'll just put this up here. Hopefully that's straight. It's a little bit gummy, but that's okay. We're just going to stick with it. And I can always fix it if I need to. If not, it's just that these are a little bit wet. I probably never have used this one before, so that's probably why. And just going to put this one down. Same way. It's just slightly askew. There 
That's cute. Simple card though. Lots of positive thoughts. So there's those two. So that's the two we already had made. So now what we're going to do is we're going to stamp another one with the postman. And we'll give him something to carry. You guys can all decide what you want. And then we'll do the um, one that we said we would do with the welcome card. So what I'm going to do is let me clean. What in the world? Here it is. Let me clean this off with my absolutely disgusting chamois that cannot get clean for the life of me. So I am going to use um, some Thick Whisper White because I think if you're coloring with a combination of the blends and the pencils, you really need something thick. So I have to grab, I have to just cut this one more time because I don't have any paper to cut. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start by cutting this in half. And then I'm going to cut this in half. And I'm going to go again. So it should be two and three quarters. So that's probably about the right size. Yeah. So we'll do one of each. So we're going to do the box card and then we will do another card with Mr. Man there. Whatever man you want him to be. UPS, FedEx, DHL. You can make him whoever you want him to be. <laughs> All right. One thing. Yeah. The, so the Fiskars has one too. That's really neat. I never knew that. Oh, yes. The finger guard. I think the finger guard comes in so handy only because for me, every time I don't use it, it is like a hair that something is not even. And it's just fate that for some reason, every single time I use that, something is not lined up. So I am going to pull out my Stamparatus for this. Oh, one of my feet came off. I'm going to pull this out only because I want to be able to line up whatever this guy is carrying more accurately. So we'll put this oops, piece of dust. We'll put this up here. Grab a magnet. Everything in this place is so precariously placed. It's a miracle. It's a miracle I don't make more of a mess. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. Okay. So I am going to use this ink because it stamps really well. You can use this with blends, watercolor, regular. You can use it with anything. So I'm using this amalgam ink. I really like it. It gives a really nice finish. The other thing that I like really, really well, but the only thing is you can't exactly use it for everything, is the VersaFine ink. It's really good for fine details if you guys have never tried this. Um, only thing is you can't do water coloring. No, you can do water coloring. You can't do alcohol with this, I don't believe, because it can smudge. So if you've never tried that, it really is worth a try. It's really nice ink. So we're going to put our guy walking, and we'll do the same thing again. We'll just kind of have him strolling in. And I'm going to just move this over just a little. I'm just going to pick him up and I have my, um, my paper aligned right to the edge here. That's typically what I do. So I kind of do it backwards of if you had a misty, how you would do that. So I'm going to just ink this up. And I did also see that there are some new inks apparently coming out. Some Delicata inks, which I've never used before, but they look metallic. So I'm looking like everybody seemed like they were so excited about that. <laughs> so the good part about this is if it's not dark enough, I'm just going to ink him up again, which is what I did last week. And I'm just pressing down. I was just uh, watching earlier that Jennifer McGuire video of her making those multiple layered fruit stamps. Did anybody else see that? Wow, man, some of those those cards looked like real fruit. Legit real fruit. She had to do a million steps to get through it, obviously, just because of the way that is, but still really, really cool. All right, so what do we want him to carry? I am going to stamp the box separately, so I'm going to do that. That way we can cut those out. So... They're better than color box. Oh, that's good to know. 
Use the amalgam ink for bleaching. That's a neat idea, too. I know I missed Gail's bleach. You know, I need to start doing my, uh, doing my setting so I can... Yes, the caterpillars are expensive, yes. Because I always miss Gail for some reason on Sundays. I don't know. I guess I'm getting ready for the week or something. I don't really know. Those strawberries did look real. All right, so we'll, what do we have? Let's see. We could put the gift... He could carry an open box full of stamping supplies. We have the flowers, the boxes. Anybody have anything? Yes, they should make magnetic pieces, I agree. Versafine for bleaching. Mm, good to know. Good to know. Amalgam ink is really, yes, amalgam ink is awesome. Plus, it's so dark. I love it. We really need to, like, up our game on this black ink if we're going to have people want to use our black ink because... That's like one of the, the main things. I mean, you want vivid black ink. You want it to be used with anything. The dog. You want him to hold the dog? Because that would be an exciting, that'd be an exciting card. Hey, by the way, here's your dog. The dog could be jumping out of his arms. <laughs> oh, heavens. I don't even know what you guys are talking about. There's groups, grouping going on. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put the dog on the bottom. I'm going to put this little box here on the top. So he's going to be holding this open box. I don't even know what we're going to do with this yet. And I'm going to do the dog at the same time again. The dog's going to be running like that. I think I like that. All right, so we're going to pick these two up again. And when you do that, you do want to make sure that you always re-put your stuff where you have it. Now he should be dry, so I'm going to put that magnet over top of him and hit these two hit the box. What we need is something to be bursting out of that box. Like they need a craft stamp that was small enough. That'd be cool. All right. So there we have the dog and the box. So now I'm going to just do my little thing of boxes here just so we can cut this out eventually. So let me wipe this off. I'll stamp that in case I need to stamp it more than once. We'll get to coloring. The rainbow stamper is out by the way. He's out touring potato chip factories. If anybody knows where they are. He's out having a good old time. Told him not to eat too many potato chips. Save some for me. I'm going to go ahead and ink up the boxes. Ooh, that one didn't turn out well. I didn't push that hard enough. the great state of Ohio. You know Maryland was formed first, right? Okay. I got at least stay Maryland dish. All right. So I'm going to leave this on the side. We'll color this last. Let me just wipe this off and we'll put this away and we'll get to coloring. And then all we got to do is cut out our other little uh, welcome. We'll layer those together and then we'll add some sentiments to our card. And I think I might even stick with the crumb cake for that because it was kind of, uh-oh, some of my magnets just snapped off the one onto the other. Look, this is what you don't want to do. If you have more than one Stamparatus, you don't want them facing together because it will snap them in half. I put the wrong side to the wrong side. So they're in there like having a, a metal fight. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and color him and the dog and what I have now thankfully we have all these back in stock again they bought, brought the rest of these back so I have my watercolor pencils I still have not found like a super sharpener I'm still using my Tupperware sharpener <laughs> for my watercolor pencils I know a lot of people have asked me and that's probably about the best I'm gonna get out the Cajun craze and get this one out too. The crushed curry and the espresso and a little bit of the gray for now. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the box um, in crushed curry. Okay. You're the home of Purell. Oh my gosh. We're the home of Old Bay. Old Bay. 
apparently, uh, as much as I love Old Bay, the, the most thing that people actually use is called J.O. seasoning, not even Old Bay seasoning, believe it or not, which would be a shock to all of us who have Old Bay t-shirts. <laughs> and Edgar Allan Poe, we're the home of Edgar Allan Poe and the Raven, hence the Ravens. So I'm just coloring the dog. I'm kind of just spreading his color out a little bit because we're also going to add a little bit of something with the blends here. So I'm kind of just doing like a little bit of different. So this is a little espresso. Do a little bit of darker up near his nose, down by his belly. Dark feet. Get a little bit more light here. He's a very multicolored dog. So one thing, one other thing you can do, and I should have brought a cup of water upstairs, but I didn't. But you can also dip these in water. I have some ice here, but it has something in it that probably shouldn't be colored with. And then they come, they become super liquidy and smooth. So that's another idea. If you've never tried that, definitely fool around with it a little bit before you do. I'm just going to give a little bit of shading underneath the dog here. A little shading under his foot kind of under the bag. You can see I'm very free and loose with my shading because I feel like if you're too stiff with it, sometimes it doesn't look the way you want it to look. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring out my crumb cake, dark crumb cake, and I need to find my light crumb cake because apparently I grabbed the wrong one. I have, we now, I finally got uh, stuffed up and got soft suede. I don't know why I didn't realize we didn't have that before. I also used ivory and bronze. That worked out really well. Maybe this is my light crumb cake. Okay. So now what I'm going to do, and I'm going to just do this with the dog first. I'm going to do the light crumb cake first and kind of start with the darker spot and just bring and quite honestly, I'm just going to tell you this. I don't know if this really blends it or if it just kind of goes over top of what you have already added. But it really gives a lot. It really gives a lot of color. I know that may not be so easy to see. And it, again, it could that be that it just kind of lays on top of the watercolor. But I think it really gives so much depth to it that I really like it. So I'm going to put a little bit of dark over on his ear here a little bit follow up with his nose so I'm just kind of going over the spots where I had the dark little one on his foot and then I'm gonna bring now I'm gonna go with the ivory this is more of a skin tone one so this really does work nicely for that so kind of makes the whole thing a little bit lighter so I have ivory and don't forget I did do a lot of this in crushed curry so if he kind of has like a little yellowish tint that's why so there's that I'll save this for skin I'm gonna make a little bit of bronze just like a couple little spots okay all right so there's that so we going with mailman since he's in blue, we'll go with Mailman today. So I'm going to just grab a few of the blue colors and we'll keep everything else brown. So I have Pacific Point. I believe this is Balmy Blue, which that looks way nothing like Balmy Blue if you look at the thing. But it does actually have a pretty good blue. I usually use Coastal Cabana as well. And you could also use Bermuda Bay. So we'll start with those for him. And I'm going to start with kind of a lighter one. So I'm going to go with Bermuda Bay first. Oh, your potato. Oh, Lord. I don't even know what is going on here now. I hear people talking about Five Guys, which is amazing, by the way. Did Five Guys originate in um, Ohio? The one place that I've never been that I always, always have wanted to go. But I guess I just didn't think about it when I was younger. Um, and I traveled a lot and could do whatever I wanted to do was um, in and out Burger. Because I hear that place is absolutely amazing. But I've never been there. So I'm just assuming it has to be somewhat similar to Five Guys. We also have a place here that was founded in Delaware called Jake's Wayback Burger. They have really good burgers and shakes. They also have chili cheese dogs and chili cheese fries. 
if you know me at all, I love chili cheese anything. So I'm kind of just bringing the blues around just for a little bit of shading. No, he doesn't really necessarily match because his pants and his shirt are slightly off, but that's okay. And I am going to also pull out... Oh, you know what else I forgot about here? Knight of Navy. We'll give him Navy shoes. I don't know. The way I did this mailman, I kind of feel bad for him. He looks like the way my grandfather used to dress. He would wear everything. Well, it was all blue. He'd have polka dots and seer sucker pants. But my grandmother also kind of encouraged that because she would say, well, he's wearing all blue. Doesn't it all match? Not exactly. All right, so there's that. So one other thing, I'm just going to show you one thing you can do besides this. You do want to have a little scrappy do. So you can also do this with a blender pen. So you can just take your, blend your colors with a blender pen. So I'm just going to do his pants so you can see them. So you can see without the blender pen, with the blender pen. So you can do that as well. That's another way to do these, which is perfectly acceptable. And then I believe, what is this, Seaside Spray? Yes, yeah, so I'm gonna go with the light Seaside Spray for his bag. And just blend over this. The one thing that the um, blender pen does is it really bleeds the colors together so you don't get a lot of the lines. So if the lines are something that kind of bother you, to me, I think it just kind of gives them so they look like they have texture. So, and you still can go over this a little bit even after you use your blender pen. This is the lighter, so let me just finish filling in the rest of this part of his shirt. And then I'll add a little bit of the dark. And if you're using these, blender pens you want to really make sure you keep your caps kind of even if they're just sitting in them if they're not necessarily capped but kind of keep them close because if not they are alcohol inks and they will dry up very quickly if you leave them uncapped I left one uncapped one time overnight and it was not pretty because I cried just a little bit of light there Bring that. All right, so there you go. So there's that. I'm going to, which one's this one? I feel like I have Flirty Flamingo. I'm gonna use just a teeny bit for the pink of the cheeks. And then I believe I'm gonna go with, here's my ivory. I'm gonna do the ivory again. It's a pretty good color. For most white folks. Bronze is a little dark. I would almost say if you're trying to go for a different ethnicity to start with um, light crumb cake because it's definitely significantly lighter than bronze. Bronze is a little dark and I'm gonna do just to show you I'm gonna do bronze for his mustache and his hair. Okay so there's that. It almost would be to the point where it kind of might you might kind of lose the detail of the face. Just put a little pink there and do something crazy for the letters. So this is mango. Because they never send bills in mango. Mango has to be cards from somebody, right? There we go. All right, so that looks pretty good. I wanted to do one more little color, but I don't know what one would be. Go just a little bit of melon on the dog. There we go. Okay, so there's that. So we have this one, so we will add something to this. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the boxes, but just for a little bit of difference, I'm going to just do a super duper light. Where is my crushed curry? I'm going to do a little bit of light on the middle box. Um, the top one we'll do in a little bit of gray. We're not going to worry about cutting or uh, shading underneath because we're going to just cut this one out. And I'm just adding a little bit more shading to the side here. 
because I decided this is going to be my shadow spot. And here's the espresso. And I'll just do the bottom with a little bit of espresso. And you could do these so they're all the same. I did completely skip the labels, and you'll see why in a minute, because I'm going to make them white. So same thing again, just a little bit over here. Okay, so that's all we're going to do for that. And then I believe this is, that's ivory, I don't want that. I want light and dark crumb cake and a little teeny bit of, what is this, light smoky slate. All right, so I'm going to do the smoky slate for the top. I'm going to start with the lighter part over here. And then I'm going to actually go to the other tip because I don't want it to be too dark. And I'm going to make it heavy on the corner here. Okay, there's one. And the crumb cake and that crushed curry marker really give that like nice cardboard color and if you want it a little bit darker you can always even go back in and just add a little bit more okay so there's that and I'm gonna do continue with that for the for the espresso just a little bit here in the corner and then I'm gonna bring in the darker it's dark crumb cake just for that edge and I'm going to use the pointier end because you can get closer to the tags just need just a little that is the uh, bronze that's a little different so what I did wanted to do for this was I actually am going to take the the label and I'm just going to put a little bit of blue. Because you know how if you have things that you want them to be really, really white, you kind of add like that blue to it. And I'm actually going to go with, that's dark, light pool party. So I'm going to just go to light pool party and just blend the edge just a little. So it kind of gives like that light package look, okay? So there we go. That's that. I'm going to just trim this out real quick. And then we'll put the rest of this together. So this one, since it's pretty square, isn't too hard. And the other thing is you can always um, go back and trace your edges with a little pen just to get rid of those harsh white edges. Bring that a little closer. May end up losing that ribbon on the top. I'm not 100% sure about that yet. <laughs> so we will be on vacation. So I have lots of great videos lined up for you guys. Blog posts. I've been working very hard. If I worked this hard all the time, I probably would have way better online presence and potential sales. If we're being honest. But for some reason. I'm not yet there yet. Once September comes. You guys are probably going to be tired of me. Because a rainbow stamper will be in kindergarten. And I'm going to have so much time. It's not going to be funny. I'm going to take my um, black Stampin' Right marker. And I'm going to just trace the edge. Not to really eliminate the white. But just to give that depth area. For when we put this on. So there's that. You can see it's nice and outlined. So that was pretty simple. Okay, so let me move all this stuff out of the way. We're going to cut our last die cut. We still have to do our sentiment, so I'm going to leave him here. Just going to move all these blends and pencils and everything over here. I'll put this away when I'm done. And we still have to cut out one more welcome. So I'm going to do that. And I'm going to do... Um, I think I'm going to do red because I want to stick with what I saw. Some red scrap. Let's see if that'll work. Okay, so I'm going to run this real quick through the big shot. And 
then I got my little poker here. So what we're going to do is we're going to put these together. And then we'll assemble that other card as well. You could always put some, um, again, some different DSP behind this little guy. So we'll pick something different out for that. I do want to make sure that I poke all these little holes, po poke all these little pieces out. That way, when you put it together, you won't have any little extra things stuck. There's that. Let me go off to school with something fills time. You know, that's that, that's not my plan, Karen. My plan has to be that I have to be more productive. That's my personal goal, to be more productive. I was considering doing a stamp class during the day, but I'm just not sure how many people are home during the day that would want to stamp during the day. Like, not really in the morning, but you know what I mean? Like, late morning to early afternoon. Do any of you guys go to classes like that where you do those kind of like morning things? I mean, for me personally, I think that most people seem to want to do a later class. But again, that could just be me. Or probably because I've never been to any class except the class that was later. So I'm just putting a little bit of Tombow onto this Rubbermaid here. I probably could wash this a little bit, but I'm just kind of dab this on and I'm very loosely I'm trying because I don't want it to be too stuck. I'm going to stick that one and I'm going to do the back side of the red while I have it. Hopefully I won't rip anything. So I'm going to put the white on top. I find this works much better than that fine tip glue pen. I like the fine tip glue pen. I know a lot of you guys don't like it because of the pin, but All right, so there's one. So I have those together. And again, the this paper is Thick Whisper White. So it's really gonna give it a lot of depth. And then I'm gonna just put this red on top. If it bothers you, you could absolutely do three layers of red. You do whatever, but it kind of gives like a neat effect with the white and the red together. <laughs> You know, I know a group of ladies I would love to craft with. Would you guys want to travel to Maryland once a week? <laughs> Not even once a week. That's asking an awful lot. Maybe once a month. Maybe we could meet somewhere in Hagerstown or something. Split the difference between us, right? Wouldn't that be funny? All right, so for him, I'm going to I'm going to grab another piece of crumb cake. And I'm going to use that for both of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just score... Let me move this out of the way so it doesn't get ruined. I'm going to score this at five and a half. There we go. And then I'm going to cut it at four and a quarter. So then I have two more bases. And I just want to cut a little piece for the background of the... Uh, the other delivery man just to put something back there so I'm going to try to look for something different maybe something we wouldn't think to use on a card mm, a little, little bit too much how about this one this is pretty cute we'll use a piece of this this is from the um come sail away so we have four I'm going to cut this down to five and then I'm going to trim that up just a little bit to three and three quarters so there's that. I wish we did live closer. You guys, if you're this much fun to stamp with online, I can't imagine. We probably would never finish a class, though, would we? Because we would just be, oh, Lord, chitty-chatting and whatnot. So we're going to have to put some sort of a sentiment on here. So I'm going to just put this one here real quick. I'm just going to adhere this. Another thing that would be really easy to use if you didn't have this, if you have the Come Sail Away Memories and More card pack, would be really pretty, too, because there's a lot of very neutral backgrounds you could use for that so we have this let's see what do we want to add for it thank you for your order you know what as a matter of fact somebody's going to get this card for their order so far it's looking like donna <laughs> donna who always tells me 
she's never going to order anything else because she has all the stuff that she could possibly need. And just to be safe, since I did this before, I'm going to stamp this because I've never used this one. Super adorable. All right, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put this kind of catty goofy. I could always come to Florida. I would love to come to Florida. Believe me, because I would be so much closer to Disney World. Let's see, kind of put that on there. There you go. That's really cute. Very simple. Not much excitement to it. Stamp sync paper. We used a little bit of uh, watercolors in the blend, so that was really easy. Let me put this away. And then we're going to have to put this last one together. And you know what? I didn't think about the fact that I do still need another piece of paper because we need something to put the back onto. So I'm going to just trim one more piece of this for what? So I'm going to do this three and a half. I'm going to try and make this a short one. Three and a half by four and a half. Let's see what that looks like. That might not be so bad. Let's, we'll take a peek and see. We can always adjust it if we need to. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this one on here. What in the world did it do with my boxes that I colored? Oh, heavens, this could be a catastrophe. Is it under here somewhere? Here's the welcome. Oh, here they are. <laughs> All right, so we have, this is gonna be the kind of scheme. We're gonna put this here and put that here. Welcome. And, oh, you know what? Forgot my other stamp set, that's why. This well said has a lot of stuff that goes with it. So welcome. Oh. Time for a new adventure. Far apart but close at heart. Best thing about today is you. Hmm, what did I want to use this one for? What the heck did they have on here? Because now I feel like I lost my marbles. So happy you're here. Oh, right in front of me. Good gravy. Okay, so we'll do so happy you're here. I can find that on here. So happy you're here. I'm going to stamp this prior to um, putting this down, just so I don't ruin it. If I need to, I can flip it over. So we'll go with that. And you know what I'm even going to do? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get this Versa fine out, just so I can show you how nicely this stamps. All right, so that's our approximate. We'll go here. Doesn't it? It's so crisp. Look how crisp that is. I love that. So nice. So, so nice. So then what I'm going to do, just to mimic that, because they had some lines there. Move this out of the way for a second. Is I'm going to just use my ruler. And I'm going to just draw. Well, you know what? I'm going to do the T-square. That way I have to make sure that they're actually... Just like that, and then I have my pilot pen. I'm just going to draw a little line one. I don't know what this is going to look like. It might not, not look anything like the catalog picture, but oh well. So be it. It looked cute in that. So then I'm going to, one more time, just put a lot of glue on the back of this because I want to make sure it sticks. My fingers are so sticky anyway, it's not going to make a difference. The project I did earlier, I was doing so much stuff on it that was sticky. It was just ridiculous. So I'll put Welcome. Hopefully that's slightly lined up. Here's my boxes. I'm actually going to pop these up on dimensionals just for the heck of it. Oops, too many. 
Bakery. Oh man, my fingers are so sticky. The uh, dimensionals backings are sticking to them. So we'll say that. Like that, that's pretty cute. Okay, and I can't leave well enough alone. So since this is just a plain background, I'm gonna do one more thing. I'm gonna grab the boxes. And I'm gonna just stamp these in crumb cake. Put this here, and then we will be all done. You could do it in soft suede if you wanted to. Kind of really anything. Let me just put this down so I don't ruin it. Oh my gosh, that's so cute. I even like it better. Just glad I thought of that idea at the last minute there. So I'm going to just put some... Ooh, is this facing the right way? <laughs> nope. Glad I checked that. That would have been a disaster. I'm going to stick that right on there. Oh my gosh, how cute is this? I think this is like my favorite card. So simple. I mean, I made that like way many you know, steps to get to simple, but it is cute. Really cute card. Super adorable card. So thank you guys for joining me and thanks for joining me late. And thank you for all the kind wishes. That's why I love all of you all so much. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart, you are all very, very thoughtful. And I truly appreciate that. Thanks for joining me. I will be back again on Thursday. Let me just put these in here so you can see the rest of them. Get this out of the way. I will be back again on Thursday at my regular time, 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Is that in? There you go. That's pretty much mostly in there. And I will see you then. As always, you know you guys can get all these supplies in my online store, RachTheStamper.stampinup.net. And this one does not come in a bundle. So this is just a stamp set. Um, lots of really cool stuff that go along with it. You can also use some of the designers' your paper that you may already have. Um, again, another great thing, just in case you are kind of, you know, the holiday catalog is coming, we are able to pre-order out of the holiday catalog next month as demonstrators. So if you would like to be able to do that, you can join my team and then you'll be able to pre-order too. And through August 31st, you actually be, are able to purchase $155 worth of stuff for just $99. So they give you an extra bonus. And then the following month, they give you a $10 coupon they will email to you. So you could use it like as free shipping or something else maybe that you wanted to purchase that you were kind of like, ah, I don't want to spend that extra $10. It's kind of like a little $10 bonus there. So if you have any questions about that, there's no obligation to sell, do classes or sell anything back if you don't use it. That's very, very simple. It's really easy. That's why I signed up so many years ago. I am always here for questions though. So you can contact me at rachethestamper.gmail.com. And otherwise, I will see you guys on Thursday. Thank you all so much for joining. And I hope the Rainbow Stamper dude brings me some potato chips and pretzels because there's nothing better than potato chips and pretzels mixed together. But my favorite are Utz. And he's going to a different factory. But, you know, a potato chip's a potato chip, right? Thank you guys so much for joining. I hope you have a wonderful week and I will see you again soon.